Hey, math students, hope you're doing all right. So uh, we know these, uh, these geometric series uh, equations now, and we know we know how to evaluate long geometric series. So uh, let's use them. Let's put them to work. Let's do some problems. Here's the first problem. We have Alicia. To plan for her retirement, Alicia deposits $75 into an account on the first of each month. Now the account pays 3% interest, compounded monthly. How much money does she have in the account at the end of three years? Okay, so this is uh, what's known as an annuity, okay? An annuity is just a string of payments. And because the string of payments is generally paid either into or from an account that's drawing interest, some of those payments get more interest than other payments do, okay? I'll explain as we go along. So, uh, so first off, how much interest is she getting? It says 3% interest, but it says compound and monthly. So 3% three, uh, 3 over 12 months is going to be, what's that? Uh, 0.25, um, that's 0.25%. So that's going to be 0 0.0025. Okay. So what that means is going month to month to month to month uh, in order to um, uh, pay 0.0025 or 0.25% interest, we're going to be multiplying by 1.0025. So that's going to be our R, all right? So 75 bucks a month for three years. So that means it's going to be 36 payments of $75. Let's look at the first payment. First payment is $75. All right. And she pays that at the very beginning. Okay. At the beginning of, on the first of the month, at the beginning of this uh, three year period. So that's going to get 36 full months of interest. So that's going to be times R. Remember that's what R is to the 36 power. And then there's another payment the next month. Well, how much interest does that get? 35 months. So that's going to be times R to the 35th power. Remember how compound interest works? Plus 75 times R to the 34th plus, etc. All the way down to, let's think about this last payment. She makes her payment at the beginning of the month, but we're measuring how much is in there at the very end. So it's going to be times 75, or plus 75 times R. So what does this mean we have? We have the sum as K goes from 1 to 36 of 75 times R to the K power. Okay? That's what we want to evaluate. Well, shoot, that looks a lot like a geometric series to me. Um, let's... Uh, uh, Let's get it into, uh, uh, let's see, the first term of this is actually going to be 75 times R. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's call this, uh, K goes from 1 to 36 of, what is 75 times, 75 times 1.0025 gets me 75.1785. Okay, so 70, 75.1785, that's my first term, that's 75R, times R, 1.0025 to the K minus 1 power. Now it looks like a geometric series that we're used to seeing, where there's our, uh, there's our A1, there's our R, so this is going to be... 75.1785 times 1 minus 1.0025 to the 36 over 1 minus 1.0025. And that, according to my cheat sheet here, is $2,828.50. Okay. All right. So, as you see, 
Once we figured out exactly what our different terms were, it fits very neatly into the uh, formula for a geometric series. Let's do another one. Okay, what does this one say? It says you have $2,000 in the bank, which earns 4% APR. APR stands for annual percentage rate. Okay, it's just another way of saying interest. It's, it's another way of saying annual interest. Okay, uh, so 4% APR interest paid at the end of each month. Every month at the end of the month, you add 50 bucks to the account. How much money do you have after two years? Okay, let's do something similar to the last time. Uh, let's see what we're starting with. We're starting with $2,000. And, uh, and then what are we doing? We're getting 4%. Okay, so let's see. Uh, 1 plus 0.04 to the 12 over 12 is 1.003 bar, I believe. Okay, so that's going to be what R is. That's going to be the thing that we multiply to apply interest uh, every month. Okay, so uh, this time... Um, our interest is at the end of the month, just like last time, except this time at the end of the month, we're adding 50 bucks to the account. Okay. So, uh, that means we're starting with $2,000 and that $2,000 is going to get the full interest. So that's two years, 12 months a year. It's going to be times R to the 24th. Then at the end of that month, I pay 50 bucks. $50. Okay. And I'm paying $50 into the account. So we're adding it in. Uh, and that's going to be, since we're losing that first month, that's going to be R to the 23rd plus 50 times R to the 22nd and on and on and on down to plus 50 times. And let's think about this. We're putting $50 into the account at the end of the month. And then we're asking what it is at the end of two years. So actually there's no time uh, that uh, goes by in order for us to get that last, uh, I mean, in order for it to accrue any interest. So that's just times 50, it's just 50, or 50 times R to the zero if you want. So what does this mean? This means that our account is going to have $2,000 times R to the 24th plus 50 times the sum as K goes from 1 to 24 of R to the K minus one power. Cool. We're used to that. All right. So this is going to be 2000 times R to the 24th plus 50 times one minus R to the 24th over one minus R. Isn't that right? And uh, that's going to be approximately uh, $2,166.29 plus $1,247.14, giving us $3,413.43. Okay? It's actually not that difficult. Once you just think about each payment, and you think about how much interest it's getting, and then you add those payments up, you see that it turns into a geometric series really easily. Uh, let's do another one. More money problems. Okay, although I wouldn't call these problems exactly. Uh, this time you inherit $5,000 from your sweet grandfather. Thank you. And you put it in the bank where it will earn 4.5% interest. Nice bank account. Uh, paid at the end of the year. Okay, so, uh, oh, at the end of the year. Uh, so so we're, not, uh, we're not compounding monthly or anything. This is going to be easy. Uh, also at the end of the year of each year, you're withdrawing 500 bucks, little, little Christmas bonus type thing. So how much money is left in the account after five years? Okay. Um, this time, instead of thinking of each of the payments, let's think about what's in the account. Okay. So we're starting with, uh, $5,000 in the account. That's, that's like at, at, year, at the beginning of year one. At the end of year one, you have $5,000 times the, uh, the interest rate. And remember, R this time is going to be 1.045 because it's 4.5% interest. And it's annual interest. 
So this is going to be 5,000 times R, but then you're subtracting the uh, uh, 500 bucks. So minus 500. Okay. So that's what we have at the end of year one. At the end of year two, you multiply this times R because you're giving, you're giving an interest. So this is going to be 5,000 times R squared minus 500 times R. And then you're taking 500 away, minus 500. Now you're starting to see what happens, aren't you? Okay. At the end of year three, it's going to be 5,000 times R cubed minus 500 R squared minus 500 R minus 500. So at the end of year five, which is what we're asking about, we're going to have 5,000 times R to the fifth. Isn't that right? Yes minus the sum as k goes from 1 to 5 of 500 times r to the k minus 1. Okay? Just look at it for a second. At the end of, our, at the end of year 2, it was this first term minus the sum as uh, minus 500r minus 500. So that's consistent with this. So at the end of year five, it's going to be minus 500 r to the fourth, minus 500 r to the third, all the way down to minus 500. All right, no problem. 5,000 r to the fifth minus 500 times one minus r to the fifth over one minus r. And uh, remember, r is that thing right there. So that turns out to be, what does that turn out to be? That turns out to be 6,230.91 minus 2,735, oops, 35.35. .35, and that comes out to approximately 3,495.55, okay? If it's a little off on a, okay, if it's a little, if it's off by a penny, that's because of rounding. It's no big deal. All right. Again, this turns into a geometric series really quickly. So annuities can be described by geometric series uh, quite simply. All you got to do is either look at each payment or look at what the uh, balance is each year, and you'll see a geometric series starting to form. Let's look at our next problem now. Our next problem has nothing to do with money. It has to do with chlorine. What the heck? Okay, so to maintain the new swimming pool at the Y, you add 32 ounces of chlorine to the water the first week and 14 ounces every week after that. So I guess the 32 ounces is like a, it's like a booster. Um, and so each week, 40% of the chlorine in the pool evaporates. That's why we have to keep adding more, all right? So how much, in the, how much chlorine is in the pool after 10 weeks? And, and so we're, uh, we're adding, that's right. So we're adding uh, 14 ounces at the end of every week. And what this is asking is, how much do we have at the end of 10 weeks right after we add that? Hmm, all right. Well, let's just start coming up with our table here. We're starting with 32, 32 ounces. That's... Boom, that's what we put in at the very beginning. Then 40% uh, of that goes away. So we're left with 32 times 0.6. But then we put in 14 more, so plus 14. So this is at the very beginning. This is after one week, right? After the next week, it's going to be this times 0.6. So 32 times 0.6 squared plus 14 times 0.6, and then we put another 14, plus 14, and you can already see what's happening, right? At the end of the third week, it's going to be 32 times 0.6 to the third, plus 14 times 0.6 squared, plus 14 times 0.6, plus 14. And we keep on going on and on and on like that. And what we're asking is after 10 weeks, so this is after week one, after week two, after week three, so after 10 weeks, it's going to be 32 times 0.6 to the 10th plus 
the sum as k goes from 1 to 10 of 14 times 0 0.6 to the k minus 1. Just look at the pattern there and you'll see that's exactly what's happening. Okay, again, we know how to do this. That's a geometric series. So this is going to be, what is 32 times 0 0.6 to the 10th? Uh, um, that is 0.1935 plus uh, 34.788, and that comes out to about 34.98, okay? And that's, uh, what is that, ounces? Yes, ounces. Okay, so, but now I'm kind of curious. That's after 10 weeks. What about after like 100 weeks or 200 weeks? Or what, after, what about after uh, 10 years? In other words, let's let this go to infinity. And what do we get? Um, well, that means we would have this go to infinity, okay? So what's 32 times 0 0.6 to the very, very big number? Well, 0 0.6 to the very, very big number is a very, very small number. That goes all the way down to zero. So this whole term here would just uh, converge to zero as n gets bigger and bigger. And what about this over here? Um, well, actually, here I didn't... Uh, I didn't put the next line, I'm sorry. This is 32 times 0.6 to the 10th uh, plus 14 times 1 minus 0.6 to the 10th over 1 minus 0.6. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so again, uh, if we're uh, letting the number of weeks go off to infinity, this goes to zero. So this whole thing just goes to zero. And this is going to go to zero. And so we're left with 14 times 1 over 1 minus 0 0.6, which is 1 over 0 0.4, which is 2.5. And 14 times 2.5 is 35 ounces. So yeah, didn't go up much, did it? Okay. Over the long haul, what that means is right after you put the chlorine in, there's going to be 35 ounces of chlorine in that pool. And think about it for a second. 40% of the 35 ounces is going to evaporate. How much is 40% of 35? Uh, that's two-fifths of 35. That's 14. So 14 ounces will evaporate. And then what do you do at the end of the week? You put the 14 back. So it just remains this stable system. Okay. All right. Last problem. The last problem says, my friend Jillian just bought a new car. All right. Good for you. It's a plug-in hybrid, and she's very excited about the fact that she's going to save lots of money on gas in addition to substantially lowering her carbon footprint. Go, Jillian! Yeah, way to go. And the car cost $18,000. Ooh, okay. Well, fortunately, she's been working for a while, and she's saved up $5,000, so that's what she's going to pay as her down payment. And then she's going to take out a loan from her credit union to pay off the rest. Her credit union is going to charge her 4.2% interest. Jillian. There are better credit unions. Okay, but anyway, uh, they're going to charge her 4.2% interest, compound at the, at the end of each month, and she's going to make payments also at the end of every month. So how much payments do those have to be for her to pay off the $13,000 in four years? Good question. Huh. All right. So again, let's think about what the balance is going to be every year. So we're starting with uh, 13,000, okay? Because she's, she paid off five immediately. So after, oh, and let's also think about what our multiplier is gonna be, what R is gonna be. Uh, this said 4.2% interest. So that means we need one plus 0.042 over 12. And what is one, uh, what is that? That turns out to be, uh, 1.0035. So that's going to be what R is. So it's basically 0.35% interest per month. All right. Uh, so that's what she starts with. So after one month, 
that has accrued one month's interest. Okay? Except she made a payment also at the end of the month. How much is that payment? We don't know. We'll call it X. Minus X. So that's how much she owes after one month. After two months, she owes this times R. So that's going to be 13,000 times R squared minus X times R. And she makes another payment of X minus X. See that geometric series starting to build? After three months, it's going to be 13,000 times R cubed minus X R squared minus X R minus X. Okay, she's making yet another payment. So what does this mean after how many months? She wants to pay it off in four years. So this means that after four years, we're going to be at 13,000 times R to the 48th minus X times the sum of, and it's going to be one plus R plus R squared plus R cubed plus blah, 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 blah. So it's going to be, uh, let's let K go from one to 48 of R to the K minus one. Okay. Now that's going to be after the 48th payment. She wants to pay it off in four years. So that means her balance after the 48th payment should be zero. Now we can figure out what X is. So if this minus this is zero, that's just like saying that this equals this. So 13,000 times R to the 48th equals X times this sum. And this sum is one minus R to the 48th over one minus R. So that means X equals 13,000 times R to the 48th times the reciprocal of that. One minus R over one minus R to the 48th. And since R is that 1.0035, I'm getting that that is $294.69. So Jillian, if you can come up with 5,000 at the very beginning, and then just under 300 bucks a month after that, that car is yours. And thank you for getting uh, an uh, economical, or well, an environmentally conscious car. I appreciate that. Okay. This is probably enough for you to handle right now. It gives you a good uh, uh, start in uh, using these geometric series. And uh, well, I'll see you at the next video. Bye-bye.